Um, yeah, to Nick, um, Nick, I enjoyed very much what you said actually, and I think you made more promises than all the other candidates put together. Um, and I noticed you were talking about these high vis teams of mixed people that were going to swoop in, and you also talked about increasing Bobby's on the beat and bringing back the neighbourhood panels. But there's a lot of money there, and the only place you mentioned you would get the money from was your office. Now, you know, three hundred fifty thousand pounds or whatever you take out of your office—that's a lot of money. But it doesn't actually actually uh, fund very many individual police. And I don't think your 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 sums at all stack up. And I noticed that you used the same money several times for different things. You said you were going to use it for the high response teams. Then you said you were going to use it for the one hundred and one service. And this is all spending money. And I can't see how the sums stack up with what you said. So is it big caps or tax dollars? Uh, can I get my question just a moment? You can answer them, and I'll make sure you have time to do that. There's some gentlemen people in the middle there. Yes. My name's Chris Stewart. In response to what you say about people drinking the public right? in Kings Lynn, the police carry a zero tolerance policy. Right? In Wisbeach, they turn a blind eye. No, they don't. No, 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 no. no, 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 no. Well, let me finish. Right? I know a. Uh, right? In Kings Lynn, if you call drinking, they will confiscate the can and you will be fined out to five pounds. In Wisbeach, the attitude is we'll look the other way and we'll walk away from it. The other question I've had, this of mine, is viewers crime commission, if you can get that to them, is this parking business in Wisbeach where I am told that they will not give parking tickets out because the town council haven't got the right signs in place. Yeah, right? Yeah. Do me a Steve. Yeah. I've got people over with people green. I was in the marketplace. I was with a police woman about the cars being parked in Hill Street and outside the bank, which is to get a parking ticket. Well, they have four of them there talking to the public about parking, blah, blah, blah. The mark, and they didn't even issue one parking ticket because they're not allowed to because there's no signs on it. What will you do about that? Yeah. Okay, we've got some issues on, on parking, zero tolerance funding. Uh, there's a gentleman over here who had a question and follow up. Yes. Yeah, I was, I was thinking of something that Steve mentioned about the NIP though, and it was this idea of sweeping up crime because we are sending zero tolerance positive every couple of weeks. Surely consistent policing in communities is what we need if we're going to eradicate crime properly. Yep. It's a bit like the idea of, oh, you've got a really bad teacher for man's up here, but we'll give you a great teacher one day a year and just going to push your exams. <laughs> Surely consistent policing is what you guys should do. Thank you, Lester, what you're going to do. I just wanted to mention, because you mentioned about the neighbourhood forums, uh, Walter Lees has been one of the areas that's actually continued theirs. And actually, the reason it's continued is because I uh, chair it on behalf of the Trust here, which is a charity, and we work very closely with the police, County Council, Fenton District Council, Wies Beach Town Council and the local housing association as well as the police and we discuss items, we set out what the priorities are and we work as a team so perhaps that's something you can take forward to other places but it does happen in Wies Beach even though we are probably not as wealthy as the rest of the county. I wonder I if I could just hop back to something, I've tried to catch your attention but because I've been on the bar you obviously couldn't see me. But when you were saying about putting extra police officers and picking the major cities, is that because they've got the highest votes and you're leaving the rest of us out because there, there's not so many of the residents that will give you all the votes? I think you should concentrate more on the rural areas because they're the ones that need you the most. On the radio, the um, people that were interviewed in those three cities said they felt safe. They felt they've got enough police. So why are extra police being put there and not where they need yeah. I think you can understand why they wouldn't dare close the forum with her as chairman. <laughs> Okay, let's go around the table with our candidates. There's quite a lot there that has been added to the conversation. And this time with you, Jason, and just rounding up some of those points. Thank you. On the, on the parking issue especially, one of the biggest problems that we've had is the county council orders haven't been um, updated. Um, so, as far as I know, those orders are being updated. So, therefore, they're not enforceable, uh, some of the other ones. 
One of the biggest issues I faced, one of the biggest issues um, that I heard um, when I came to Wisbech was about parking around the town centre. Um, and it, is, it gets back to this consistent, absolutely right, consistent community policing. And that is what is needed in these areas. When I went to Cambridge, I saw 14 police cars in the back of the yard. When you go to Peterborough, it's a similar story. People in the rural areas feel left out, and that is clearly not good enough, and that needs to be addressed. And if I am elected, I grew up on a farm, I lived in a rural area most of my life, I understand uh, the rural, the rurality of our, of our huge county in many respects. So believe you me, if I am elected, I will readdress some of those imbalances. Um, on the parking thing, it's a, it's a council issue, and you know who's the county council? It's a Tory <coughs> county council. So without the without the legislation, in, without the signs in place, it's not the 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 it's we have the problem in Cambridge City, it's because the County Council won't give us no parking signs that we can't enforce them. But I'm going to move on from that, because we're not going to, we're not going to go there, okay? In regards to the, the concept of providing individual police officers, I'm coming back and I'm going to keep on my one thing. I'm not going to change on the hoof. I'm coming back to the spirit of cooperation talking with local communities. I visited, since I started my campaign, March, Chatteris, Warboys, Linton, Salston, Great Shelford, and 30, 35 to in total different places. They all asked me for police officers to be visible in their community. The police service in Cambridge is around 1,200 police officers. 1,200. They're, they work in about 300 police officers on duty at any time. That's including senior ranks and all the other units that are in place. I can't promise you the earth. What I'm telling you is we will try an experiment, a trial in three of the cities. As that works, as I get out and talk to the communities. Cities, not, not rural. Yeah, not I'm not, not going to change on the hoof my policy. I'm going to work with what I'm saying and what I'm planning to do. And I'm telling you that I'll come and talk to the community. If it becomes a priority, then it will be prioritised. I'm not going to change because 30 people, 40 people in a room are saying to me, you've got to change your policy. And I agree we need more police in Wisbech. I'm agreeing with that. How that might be done, I cannot say at this point. But I'm not ignoring it. I will come to Wisbech and talk to people with the sector commanders, with the senior police officers, and then we'll set policy from there. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's talk about parking first. Um, I think the time has come to reconsider the safety parking enforcement here, but make sure it's decoupled from the off street parking charges or not. There should be no need to link the two. Now, that's what did for it last time, from my recollection. Um, civil parking enforcement has the virtue that it can be set up to self-funding, it can make sure that people are around to be tasked where the problems are. Um, wherever you want to go in Wisbech, there are different sorts of challenges about people abusing parking. Right in the Georgian core, it's a different feel for out here, but there's still plenty of work to be done in both places. So, we do that. Also, of course, means the police come to do sort of policey things and leave CP enforcement to people who are good at doing that and just go and do it all day, every day. Um, in terms of rural crime, actually, the whole thing about the rural community being abandoned is not just a police thing. The county council have recently passed a budget where there's been no council tax increase. That may be ideologically fantastic for um, George Osborne's fans. No. But, <laughs> but it puts extra pressure on the police. The police are the social services of last resort. If there's nowhere else to go, people end up getting in touch with the police, either because they have nowhere else to go, or they are forced to do something foolish or unhelpful. We need to be sure that 
out in the rural communities, they are looked after properly by all the services. Um, and to that end, one of the things that used to happen used to be police houses in our various communities. Used to have a police officer up, but used to know quite well, used to go shooting with him, that sort of thing. Um, <laughs> Well, you did. If you lived in a village, you knew the police quite well because they were just part of the city. Not really. It's just, it's just more, I was trying to illustrate that certainly in Wellington, the serving of the people in the area knew the community, the community knew him, there was a connection there. And that's what we're trying to get back to, is get back to the point where the police, they are serving the community, and in particular, when you want to contact the police, you know you can, and you know they understand what you're doing. That's a long, we've got a long way to go on that. 101, fixing that would be a start, but it's a tiny part of the path. But you need to be able to be able to get hold of people. <coughs> uh, thank you, Rupert. Just wrapping up that piece, uh, Nick. Thank you, John. I just like to say a bit more sensible, yeah. actually. Um, first of all, uh, Steve, um, okay, so how are we going to fund these great ideas? Uh, the first thing I'd like to say is that, uh, you mustn't quote me, but I've run my manifesto uh, past the Chief Constable uh, within the last two weeks. He says he can deliver on all my ambitions. So as far as I'm concerned, that's validating. Uh, the second thing is, uh, the gentleman here talks about uh, consistent policing. Of course we want consistent policing. But as has already been said, since 2010, police numbers have dropped by 8%. So rather than like other members of the panel who keep repeating what the problem is, I've tried to give a solution within the budget as it stands at the moment, and that's the zero tolerance. But also, I want to increase the number of special constables, and one of the key things to do that is to remove the ridiculous restrictions there at the moment that says they cannot become a special constable for their own village where they live. Now that is a, a, a completely fictitious. Absolutely rubbish. That, that, that is currently the regulations. Give us a rubbish. I was a special constable. Yeah. I come from Wesbeach, not police to Wesbeach. Oh, okay, well that's great. But I bet you didn't police your neighbourhood, did you? I police all over Wesbeach. Well, okay. Everywhere. Well, well that's fantastic. Uh, I'm being told by the Chief Constable that is still an impediment. I don't, so, I don't know for eight years. Okay, well that, that's tremendous. Just what I'm being told. But if it's not an impediment, I'm not going to solve it. <laughs> But I'm being told it is, and if it is an impediment, I will solve it. So that's two things straight away. Um, let's go back briefly to the um, uh, to the engagement of the police as an organisation of last resort. I think other partner organisations turn to the police far too quickly. Uh, let's take the NHS for example. If somebody absconds from the NHS and isn't a danger to themselves or to other people, that should not necessarily become a police matter straight away. Because the NHS have nurses, they have vehicles, they have uh, 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 porters who can go and look for them. So, but at the moment what happens is the police are called out to do that and it's hugely intensive of manpower. There are lots of examples like that and I think there needs to be a robust, sensible conversation to say what is a policing matter and what is it. And clearly if someone is a danger to themselves or others, then it is a police matter. Uh, and finally, we go back to the... Uh, the, the bureaucratic rump of, of the police and crime commissioners at, at, at the moment. You know, the police is the most over-regulated organisation that I know. It has a chief constable, an assistant chief constable, a deputy chief constable, a chief financial officer. It has got a director of finance, it's got a, a press office. The police and crime commissioner has got a deputy, he's got a chief executive, and he's got a director of communications as well. This is totally unnecessary. I won't be having a deputy and rather than a policeman on the streets. Uh, we certainly only need one press organisation, if at all, but only one, not two. I'm afraid we don't need two chief financial officers. One of those again. Now, that's only small amounts of savings, Steve, but that's three or four people that can be turned into police officers straight away. Just excuse me, I'm not sure if I'm wrong, but I thought the chief financial officer was one of the regulatory officers you have. Yeah. Okay. Right, we're, we're running towards the end. Uh, one of us, there were some questions and points people wanted to make on this debate, so I'm just going to go round the room because I've indicated where they all are. 
and then I've got two last questions I want to get in before we wrap up, but we will be closing at nine o'clock. Okay, let's get in the background. Michelle, you had a question. Yeah, it was just actually, you gentlemen asked it, answered it before roughly, but one of the biggest accumulates I've got is parking, 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 parking. Now, I assume that the police can't get around to everyone and give people tickets because they're too busy doing policing things. So I'm hoping that the Police and Crime Commissioner will work with, you know, Fenland or the County Council and actually start making this a civil, like a civic event so that actually we can get some money. So uh, it, I know you did answer that as well, but I'm just wondering about the views of others because it seems like at the moment you can park wherever you'd like, no one gets any trouble, people park on yellow lines and it is a problem. So I don't think that's one of the big issues in Finland. So on my own camera. Um, question to um, to all of the panel. Young, it's great to see some young people here. Young people are disproportionately impacted by violent crime, in particular as victims of crime, in particular going out and about in the evenings. So two questions. One, how are you going to get more young people involved in the decisions that are taken in particular priority setting, and two, on all things social and digital media, how are you going to use social and digital media to engage with young and new audiences, but don't, for example, take part in public debates like these? Thank you. Okay, we'll part my question for just a moment, uh, getting a ticket. Can I just um, ask one yes, sir, you follow on from that lady just said there, and what everybody on the panel there said about parking in English speech, can I just, before I ask this, can I just say, I am not racist, I can't be, because I'm Cornish and my wife's half Welsh. So I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not racist. Can you just make a point so we I've, got, some of the I've got three or four officers, serving officers, who are still good friends. One of them told me about six weeks ago, because I asked him about the parking thing, he said, A, we can't do it because we haven't got enough staff, and B, we can't go around issuing parking tickets to foreign cars because we can't track them down. What would you do about that, gentlemen? Okay, well, I'll park that one again, just in a night by this time. Um, some more questions. Uh, some more points. People want to make some points. Uh, ben, you wanted to ask a question. I know, but can you? I'll go to you after this okay. moment. You're one of the last questions because that was related to the gentleman in the back there. Um, some other points on the general policing issues. What yes. Just on the mention about the bad parking in Westbridge because I have contacted the police and they said different ways, including Super and Bright, and they have always said it is up to us. We haven't got the time to do it. Okay. Um, there's pretty couple of points in there. Yes, sir. Well, just, just say that I understand people's concerns about their parking, but it's understandable why perhaps the police don't come here as much as they do when our major problem tonight seems to be parking rather than theft, robbery, burglary, etc., drug dealing, etc., etc. We don't need to discuss for 20 minutes I about parking. Well, it's interesting you know, that they came here tonight with an open view as to what yeah. was going to be discussed, and that does seem to be a major topic, Sam. Uh, yeah, just, I'm sorry to mention parking, I what you've just said, but um, you should, I don't know if many of you are aware, but actually the police have got um, 100 hours of funding specifically to deal with parking for Operation Patchell, um, and that's why they've been doing it there, and we crack down. So the people are saying they can't in Hill Street, they absolutely can, because they have been. Um, so would you guys support that continuing, um, possibly with the help of... You know, councils, they need to make sure, whatever, but continuing that, because it is working. I'll, I'll invite the candidates to use to tackle the parking in their summing up, because we'll be moving towards that shortly. Uh, yeah, just to pick up on a point that Ginny mentioned uh, earlier on, non just parking. Um, and that is the thing about preventing crime in the first place. So, with speech in particular, it's. Um, we, we score very poorly on a, a lot of the social um, indicators, very poor health, <coughs> very poor um, sexual health, very, you know, right across the spectrum, education, everything. Those are causes of crime. They, they, they contribute towards um, crime. So, so far I've not seen anything from any of you about an evolving strategy, what you would do to engage with other stakeholders to, to prevent crime in the first place. Okay, that's another point they'll absorb in, uh, in perhaps in their summing ups. Um, this lady in the second row, did you want you wanted to make a point? Or what, 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 what? Yes. Just something. Um, 2002, neighbourhood watch over me having 120 coordinators. We now have less than 50. The reason is we have very little contact with the police. The police themselves don't really seem. We get something on ECOPS, 
but to actually physically talk to a policeman, we don't. And I think this is the reason we've dropped in numbers because they are realizing there is no communication from us to the police. It may be better to see the image of the communities, but rurally and in this age, it doesn't exist anymore. Okay, I'm going to run it. You summarize uh, those points. Um, ben, you asked a question earlier. You wanted a question. Thank you. I'm chair of Ben's Youth District Council, and my question is quite related to the point made by the gentleman. And I read a report yesterday, which uh, was published a couple of years ago, but it said that there was, and I quote, a profound lack of trust between young people and the police. And it also said that there was, and I quote again, a poor and unconstructive communication. So I'd like to know how you would try to ensure that young people and the police force can work together in trying to reduce crime in the local area. made this evening was about prevention because we know that prevention is better than cure and one of the easiest ways to prevent crime is to absolutely engage with other stakeholders that is what I have a great history of doing cross-party engagement bringing partners together for delivery where you have pockets of deprivation as we know um, in Wispeach especially that needs to be tackled because those social issues go on to become major issues further down the road. You, there, statistically, it's absolute fact that um, you are more likely, in fact three times more likely, if you live in an area such you know, of, of uh, deprivation, to be more involved three times more in crime. And be a victim of crime. And to be a victim of crime. Absolutely right. Absolutely right. And the only way you can do that is to engage, to make sure that local stakeholders, councils, uh, the third sector are engaged with this, and indeed the youth. Because these are our people of the future, these are the people that, that fear the police, because they, um, you know, they are not feeling engaged. And I think that is hugely important as well. Uh, and one of the things, and one of the key things that the police commissioner should be here to do, and I will do, is engage with all stakeholders, engage with the youth, and engage with the population. Ow. Specifics. Okay, okay. I'm happy to you off. Okay, we'll cut off. We'll just put on for I mean, we're back to my same platform. I know it might sound like that, but I'm saying to people that I will engage with the community, that I will bring police officers to the community, and it will be dealt with in that fashion. I can't offer you anything different to that. I'm not making promises of things that I can't promise from this position. You know, the Police and Crime Commissioner is responsible for setting strategy, is responsible for setting the budget, is responsible for seeing that the Chief Constable does the work that a lot of you people are talking about. And a lot of the things you're talking about here are operational policing, which is not the Police and Crime Commissioner's actual job. Now, I am saying, I will come to Wisbeach. I will bring police officers with me. We will discuss things. We will set priorities. We will make, meet with young people. We will meet with old people. We will meet with all the people. And I can't offer anything. I'm not going to change my, my strategy on the hoof in this room. What I'm saying is that we will, that we will talk to people and that we will set priorities from them. That is what we do in Cambridge City. Cambridge City, where I am a councillor, set priorities for policing. It actually happens, it actually works. Okay. Uh, oh, yes, prevention is better than cure. The way to reduce crime is to reduce reoffending. So, if there's somebody committing their first offence, you make sure they don't commit a second. If there are prolific offenders, you make sure when they come out of prison, go up close behind them, make sure they aren't in a position to re-offend. If they wish to change, you make it possible for them to do so. These things reduce crime. It is the way to reduce harm to individuals. <coughs> Where funding is necessary, I will again not lie to you. Within the allowance of increasing the council tax, if there's a good reason so to do, I shall do so, because it will still be cheaper to you than increased insurance premiums, and certainly cheaper than suffering the burglary or something worse. It is worth <coughs> one investing in the police service to get the police service you deserve. OK, 
because we'd love to absorb that. Any last points? Can I ask a quick question of the audience if you feel that you wish to answer this one? Does anybody feel that they can give any of the candidates any hope tonight by having been persuaded to change their mind? I'm not asking what you vote for. Does anybody, one or two people have, uh, have changed their mind? Have you changed your mind of before you arrived tonight now as to who you might vote for next week? No, I've made my mind up though. I may just try to give them some you know, hope to drive home. Okay. Right, we're about to conclude the meeting and what I'm going to do, is the tea and coffee going to be available, Chris? 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 I mean, is tea and coffee going to be available afterwards? Okay. Um, I, I, I'm going to, um, I've lied to the candidates because I promised them two minutes at the end, but I think they've probably done enough to um, tantalise your <coughs> election taste buds, so we're going to restrict it to one minute summing up, and um, hopefully then that will be it. So, um, I can't remember which the order will go in, but it was the reverse of where we started, so we started at um, that end with you. So we'll start with you, Rupert, you have one minute beginning now. Um, if you want to reduce harm, if you want to reduce crime, rather than just increasing arrests or having doors kicked in, other nonsense, no nonsense policies, please vote for me. I'm a lifelong public servant. I've served the public all of my life. I've been involved in emergency work for most of my life. And I'm saying I will consult with the communities. I will listen to what the communities are saying. And if you don't want that, then don't vote for me. Thank you. From my point of view, um, one of the key things is m making sure that we acknowledge communities such as yours. That is the most important thing of all. It's no good you feeling out on a limb anymore. It's no good you feeling unloved. It's no good you feeling that the police don't care. If I'm elected, I will ensure that I get out here. I will go to every corner of the county on a regular basis. One of the keys to being a good police and crime commissioner is communication. And I know that that has been lacking, um, and I will be the first to admit that with our current commissioner. But from my point of view, it is a key part of the job. And for someone that grew up in a rural area, I know the challenges we have out here. Um, and I will ensure, uh, fundamentally, that your voice is heard and that your priorities will be my priorities. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, if you want somebody who's experienced and tough on crime with a no-nonsense approach, that, that's me. And I have a track record of doing that in a number of walks of life. If you want the Chief Constable to have somebody he can have a critical dialogue with and have his priorities refocused onto neighbourhood policing, and what's important to people, then you should vote for me. If you want somebody who is competent and experienced in operating nationally with ministers to get fair funding for our schools, for example, then you should be voting for me. Uh, and I already have uh, what most of these guys are promising, and that is a track record of working across this county in all our communities with our social work teams, with our highways, with our children's services, and all the four of us when I was the leader of the county council. So I have the experience and I have the energy. Thank you. And that uh, indeed does come up this evening. So I'm meeting this, I do apologise, I should have told you earlier, the emergency exits are there. Right there. Uh, but feel free to make a note for future reference. Thank you. Thank you.